I know this episode is directed by Vince Gilligan. I don't know why my white balance changed again. It beats me, okay? Little bro thinks he's Don Eladio. That's me. Who do you think you would be if you were in Breaking Bad? And you, you can't just say like a person living their normal life. I'll be honest with you. I think like I'm 100% the chemist who gets killed. I think I am the... Gil, is that his name? I'm the good chem... Gail, that's it. I'm the good chemist who gets hired and is like, sure, I'll cook drugs. I'm good at chemistry. And then like two weeks later, I'm like, I fucked up. Oh, <laughs> I swore at the start of the video. Ah, you two, please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You already age restricted my first Texas Chainsaw Massacre video. Couldn't they have called the game something like the Texas Chainsaw Birthday Party? Please, you're making it so hard to get around the, the Google DeepMind filters. Anyway. Hey, you were just talking about um, old people who look young. What about young people who look old? Did you see that high school football player who has a mustache? I, oh, okay, listen. I know that that sound... Wait, I got it all backwards. I didn't, your message got scrolled out before I could read the whole thing. It's, he's actually a middle school uh, football player, right? He's like a 12-year-old kid who has a full mustache and looks like, not to be rude, but he looks like minimum a 30-year-old man. What's crazy is it's not Baby Gronk, okay? This is a different... <laughs> I don't know Livy's position. I, didn't she get rizzed up by like a baseball player or something like that? I don't know. I, got it, that maybe there's going to be a fight between that baseball player and Baby Gronk. Anyway, listen. Mollusks. 12.5% of mollusks. An eighth of their exports are mollusks. Cranes? This country has... $8 million in total exports, okay? This must be, uh, I have to imagine it's a Pacific Island nation. I'm going to call this Wallace and Fatuna. It's a... Uh, it's a South American island nation. I don't know. Is Dominica South America or is Dominica... North America in the Caribbean. Is Dominica part of my continent? It's crazy that at the end of the day, I think if you asked me to name countries on every continent, I would probably miss a higher proportion in Oceania just because of all the Pacific Islands out there. But number two would be North America, man. By landmass, I got like 98% of North America covered. But by number of countries, all, all the Caribbean nations, I mean, you, I, if they're not in the Beach Boys song, it's easy for me to forget. So I'm going to say this is Dominica. Saint Kitts and Nevis. Antigua and Barbuda. There's another saint. Could it be Saint Lucia? Margarine. $101,000 in margarine. Okay, this is pure Barbados margarine. Oh, Turks and Caicos Islands. The Turks and Caicos Islands. What was I thinking? I'll be honest. Um, I have heard of the Turks and Caicos Islands. But uh, until I, that was surfaced at the end there, I had forgotten that it existed. So I apologize. I got it first try. I'm so pumped. Joe Weisenthal in the chat, everybody. Joe Weisenthal in the chat. Congratulations. 
It's not enough that people are lining up to kick my ass on the Peloton, even though I'm working my damn behind off. Now everybody's popping in and saying, hey, I got today's trade in one. Never ends. Let me just bend over, pull my pants down. You can all give me a spank on the way by. That make you happy? That make you happy? My bare butt, balls, and back. Okay, Turks and Kaikos. Did you mean Burkina Faso? Turks and Caicos Islands? That's not found in the database. <laughs> it's not a real country? It's a territory. Okay, who, who, who administers it? Is it Turkey? Is it Caicos? It's a United Kingdom territory. Okay, United Kingdom. Gotta be an absolutely horrible first guess. Actually, it's really close. <laughs> Um, what are the Netherlands? Yes, yes, I did mean Netherlands. Hold the the. That's even warmer. Okay. 400 kilometers. Am I crazy to think that Switzerland is not too far away? That's adjacent. Okay, it's La Lichten... Steen. Yes, I did. That's a J. Is that Liechtenstein? Okay. If it's adjacent to Liechtenstein, then it must be this country right here, which is Austria. Yay! <laughs> oh. He knows Europe. One of the top 10 places um, Mozart has ever been born. In my opinion, at least. <sighs> Am I crazy on this one? This is Argentina. This is Argentina. Argentina. <laughs> Thirteen thousand kilometers northeast. You're Norway. Tomo, don't even think about it, brother. Five thousand kilometers southeast. Are you Madagascar? Forty nine hundred kilometers straight north. <laughs> uh, are you Georgia or South Georgia and the Sandwich Isles? South of Georgia. I'm just going to be straight up with you. I don't have, I'm not optimistic about my chances here. I'm trying 2,000 kilometers from Georgia. I feel like this place is it on the Arabian Peninsula, but like this doesn't look right to me, but I could be wrong. Is it oriented the way that it is on the Mercator projection? They wouldn't rotate it and, and trip me up, right? Or is this like, could this be the Mediterranean and this is like Lebanon? I feel like Lebanon is not 2,000 kilometers away from Georgia. Okay. It's like Yemen, Oman, Qatar, Yemen. Oman, Yemen, 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 the correct, Qatar. <laughs> I thought Qatar was like, 
Um, sorry, my it's flipped. I thought Qatar was like, isn't it resting next to the United Arab Emirates like this? Or is Qatar, Qatar is it north to south? It looks like Kiadi Mundi's head. You got it confused with Oman. What you know? The other thing is, I can't be mad at my guesses. Like this kind of looks like our. Well, obviously it doesn't because it's wrong. But like Argentina is oriented like north to south like this. Norway looks like this. You could take Qatar and just put it like you could overlap it with Norway and scale it, and it would look pretty similar. It looks a little bit like Madagascar. Now, Georgia, Lebanon, and Yemen, those were maybe not good guesses, but it looks nothing like Norway. Shut up. This is Norway. Norway and Sweden both look like sausages. This is a sausage. Just because it doesn't look like Jimmy Dean's, they're all uniform and exactly the same shape. It looks more like Sweden. This is like when people are... This is like... Um, Kira Knightley saying she doesn't look like Natalie Portman. Yeah, you don't look identical, even though you played her body double in Star Wars Episode I, The Phantom Menace. But if you had to pick two celebrities that look alike, you would be like, those are the two I'm, I'm taking personally. Look up the shape of Argentina? No, no, I don't think I will. Oh, this is like my birth week. November 25th, 1988. I gotta, I gotta call my mom. Mom, what did you see at the movie theater a few days before I was born? Let's see. Well, I gotta tell you, none of these movies really crushed it, but $18 million opening in 88 is not too bad. Paramount Pictures starring Bill Murray. We're gonna call that Scrooged. Came out just before Christmas. It just makes perfect sense. Okay, that's a big one. Universal made more money in its second weekend. Starring Gabrielle, Gabriel Damon. Tagline. It is the dawn of time, the land of the dinosaur. We're going to call this the land before time. Easy. Walt Disney made 58% more money in its second week. I feel like... Disney movies from the late 80s, the first one that popped off was like The Little Mermaid. Wrong, okay? Let me get a tagline. The first Disney movie with attitude? We're going to put a pin in that one for a second. 20th Century Fox somehow opened to less than its total gross even though it's its opening weekend. Starring Don Amesh, a science fiction comedy, Weird Science. Actor I've never heard of, movie older than me. Tagline, this holiday season, journey to the most wonderful place in the universe, home. What is ET2? Put a pin in that one. Touchstone Pictures presents... A Jim Varney film. What is Ernest? Goes to... What is Ernest goes to jail? What is Ernest goes... Ernest saves Christmas. Hey! It makes perfect sense because it came out in November. Okay. Ernest sucks so bad. You shut your mouth when you're talking to me. Okay. Ernest is pretty stupid, don't get me wrong, but Jim Varney is a national treasure. And Ernest Scared Stupid, which probably came out in like 1992, 1993, ergo, when I was in daycare, I was watching it like, you know, once a week, scared the ever-loving shit out of me. I actually think that Ernest, I always talk about the Super Mario Brothers movie being where I got this weird ick about like, the de-evolution chamber where they take Toad and they, against his will, they like turn him into a stupid little Goomba. 
I think that Ernest Scared Stupid is actually the the seed that germinated into the Super Mario Brothers movie because that weird little uh, goblin captures the kids and turns them into statues. I think that's what grossed me out more than anything else. What does he call him? He calls him Booger Lips, something like that. Authentic Bulgarian Miak. I'm not convinced it's not bad, though. Can I get a Rotten Tomatoes a check on Ernest Scared Stupid? Honestly, if it's above a 15%, I consider that a positive. I'm just waiting for the lore masters to come in. It's at a 17. We take those. <laughs> oh, man. That's probably the highest reviewed. Well, actually, no, I feel like Ernest Goes to Camp might be the highest reviewed Ernest movie. That was like the first one. Audience is 50. I take this as an absolute win. But like the Super Mario Brothers movie does that too. Not just when they turn Toad into a Goomba, but then like Princess Daisy's dad gets turned into like a freaking like a drippy little mushroom dude, like he's just goop. It's disgusting, man. Anyway. It still bothers me to this day. Even because because it made the emotional connection like when when my brain was this big. It's like the core of the ever loving gobstopper. Like I can't get to that to I gotta peel off 2,500 layers of onion just to be able to excise that little traumatic nugget that got placed in there in the early 1990s. The first Disney movie with attitude. I'm revealing all hints. This animated take on Oliver Twist. Oliver. Oliver and Company. I've never seen it, honestly. I have to imagine this is not a, a beloved Disney classic because even when I put on the Spotify Disney playlist for my kid, no songs from Oliver and Company come on. And it legit, it plays like some songs you'll never have heard before in your life. Everybody wants to be a cat. 20th Century Fox, Journey to the Most Wonderful Place in the Universe, Home. Wilford Brimley. This is motherfucking Cocoon, dude. Or this might be Cocoon 2. Cocoon. The Return. <laughs> 57th percentile. Let's go! Whoo! That's a big one, man. That's a, we got all five today. I am not washed. Honestly, that's one where like... I feel like if you're part of Gen Z, this one was just impossible for you. Corey, hello, Corey. Corey, can I tell you something? I'm not putting this on you to, to flex it on you, okay? And I, I swear to you, because I know you've had COVID recently. And if anything, I'm glad you're not on the bike. Because like last year when everybody was getting COVID, I was reading on the Peloton subreddit, People were like, my one regret is after COVID, I got back on the bike too fast and it screwed up my lung capacity on the bike for like four months. Everyone's like, I wish I just took an extra week off, but I need to flex a little bit because I lost a chat on the bike today. So I got to recover some self-esteem. Three 30 minute rides today, 90 minutes total. Average output, 220 watts. Oh! Admittedly, a lot, a, lot of the, a lot of what was responsible for the high wattage was out of the saddle work, which is a little bit, I don't want to call it illegitimate, I'll call it less legitimate. Than, than grinding it out in the saddle, but still. Um, cadence, around 80, something like that. Now... I don't think I can connect these two movies. I'm just going to... Well, you know what? I think I can. I think it's just going to be hard.
because I don't know anybody who's in Young Frankenstein except Gene Wilder and Mel Brooks. I don't know anybody who's in South Park, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut, even though I did see it when I was a, a little kid. So I think I got to find a way to get to Gene Wilder, which means we're going to connect through Blazing Saddles or Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, in which he was essentially the only star. <laughs> Blazing Saddles has... You know what? Here's what I'm going to do. Maybe it's a little resinous. Let me see if there's big actors in... Okay, George Clooney, Mini Driver. Oh, there's, I knew there would be like some cameos in here, okay? It seems very feasible to get to one of these five actors from Gene Wilder or from somebody else in Young Frankenstein who I forgot. So give me the daily and free my soul. Peter Boyle. Don't talk to her like that. Don't talk to your mother like that. You talk to her like that. She's not my mother. Gene Hackman. Who am I trying to get to again? <laughs> George Clooney. What? Holy. Who would have thought? Who's the bigger driver, Adam or Minnie? Well, like, this dude's name is Clement Von Frankenstein. He's in Young Frankenstein. Adam is a bigger driver in star power, but Minnie is no slouch in the driver category herself, quite frankly. She just hasn't done that much in like a few years, but I mean, she was in Reindeer Games. She was in Goodwill Hunting. She was in Rounders. Okay, who, who am I trying to get to again? George Clooney? My way of thinking this through is you, you gotta go Gene Hackman. Gene Hackman hasn't done a lot recently, of course. But he was in Welcome to Mooseport with Ray Romano. I just wanted to bring that up. Um, George Clooney. George Clooney was in this. Hang on. George Clooney. I'm thinking Gene Hackman. I'm thinking Gene Hackman. Gene Hackman takes you to Runaway Jury. Now that is a star-studded cast. Dustin Hoffman, Rachel Weisz, John Cusack. We're trying to get to... Oh, the senator who melted in X-Men? Jeremy Piven? Cliff Curtis? Cliff Curtis was in this? I didn't know that because I didn't know who Cliff Curtis was back then. Jennifer Beals. Jennifer Beals. She's been in stuff. Flashdance. Flashdance. Mm, Luis Guzman is in this. Dylan McDermott. Rusty Schwimmer. This movie has everybody. <laughs> Nora Dunn. Orlando Jones. Wait, where was I going with this again? George Clooney. George Clooney. This movie had everybody, man. There's got to be an easy connection here that I'm missing. Um, and the brain is starting to work. It's starting to work. But it's not there yet, but it's starting to work. What I'm thinking is you go Bruce Davison. You take that to X-Men just to be reminded of the scene where he melts. And then surely there is a George Clooney... Hugh Jackman movie or a George Clooney Halle Berry movie. You could always go Ray Park and that allows you to get to Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. That allows you to go to lots of individuals. It allows you to go to Ray Park for one. George Clooney, he's been in a lot of stuff. He's been in Oceans. How is it so hard to get to the Oceans movies? Answer, it's not. It's not. Where was Minnie Driver? <laughs> Take me back to Runaway Jury, man. I've gone too far. Ensemble cast. In that case, give me a Natalie Portman. Natalie Portman takes you to Closer. Takes you to Julia Roberts. Takes you to Oceans. Takes you to George Clooney. Takes you to South Park, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut Time. Total distance six, shortest possible two. Mary Kay Bergman to Annabelle's Wish to 
Cloris Leachman to Young Frankenstein. We made it there. Took us a minute. We made it there. What the hell is this? Psychonauts looking. Yeah, I don't like how this website is. It's, it's pinging servers nonstop. I forgot Cloris Leachman was in Young Frankenstein. With God as my witness, if you showed me a picture of Cloris Leachman, I would tell you that that's Cloris Leachman. If you asked me to name one movie that she's in, I could not. This is Psychonauts 2. Okay. <laughs> Why 2? Because it looks like it didn't come out in 2009. Okay. Now, this is great because this is a huge callback. Because every once in a while, people say, Why do you call games Psychonauts looking ass? Because I know what Psychonauts looks like. The Psychonauts doesn't look like this. Oh, yeah? Explain how I just got that in one then. No one's ever played it. People love Psychonauts, man. It's, it's a certain, I don't like it, but it's a certified millennial classic. Like The Office. I'm going to know this. I don't know it yet, but I'm going to know this. This is a Tomb Raider. I'm going to say it's Anniversary. It's Underworld, because she's looking a little edgy. It's The Last Revelation. It's probably Legend, if I had to guess. Yep. <laughs> Got to be one of the least inspiring game covers. I don't know if the game's any good, but the cover does not... Um, does not inspire a lot of confidence. Let's put it that way. Oh, we have game doll artwork. I forgot. The perfect smoky eye. I know this game. I think. Is this not Plague Tale Innocence? Uh, <laughs> Ghosts of Tsushima? Onimusha 3 Demon Siege? Neo 2? Sekiro? Shadows Die Twice? Brother, I'm, I don't know what this is. I have no idea what the Tenchu Stealth Assassin. Shadow Tactics. I heard that game was amazing. But I will not play it. Because I can't play a tactics game unless it's made by the same developers as FTL or it's a main series XCOM game. I'm sorry, I just realized that's where I am. When I played Desperados 3, everyone was like, it's one of the best tactics games of all time. Played it for a couple hours and I was like, no aliens, no aliens, no mechs. Or Midnight Suns, that's true. <laughs> Forgot about Midnight Suns. XCOM 3 coming out 2028. I will be there no matter what. Mbappe. Marvel's Midnight's. They don't even have Midnight Suns. 
That's like such an indictment of that game's cultural footprint. Is any game ever been unrighteously assassinated like Marvel's Midnight Suns has been? It was, is it as good as XCOM 2? No. Is it as good as XCOM Enemy Unknown slash Within? No. But it's really good. I would call it a great game. I would call it an eight and a half out of 10. The fact that it has no lasting cultural footprint in the gaming industry is crazy to me. You were insane to call it an 8.5? Motherfucker, you didn't play it. You watched me play it. I played the whole fucking thing. Now, Dave the Diver is a 10, but Marvel, Dave the Diver is a 5.8. Midnight Suns is an 8.5. Super Auto Pets is a 12, okay? That's how you have to normalize your scale. Triangulate the rest of my scores based on that. I know I didn't play it or buy it or even watch you play it, but I think it's like a 5. You don't know what you're talking about, idiot. Go back to game FAQs. Don't let your preconceived hunches be a surrogate for a dearth of life experience, okay? Some of us are in the trenches actually playing games instead of arguing about them on social media 12 hours a day. People got a damn Gears of War avatar. You're going to give them three hours of your time on a Saturday? XCOM Enemy Unknown. Okay. It's more recent. Then XCOM Enemy Unknown. We learn nothing. Except it's not XCOM 2. And it doesn't include science fiction warfare. Understood. I'm going to call that a Pikmin... I was thinking Pikmin 3 might be in here. We're going to call that Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Oh! A side view game that did not come out for the Switch and is either a platformer or a fighter, but not both and is either an action party game. Side view, so it's not gonna be a Mario party. And it came out before 2018. We're gonna call this Injustice Gods Among Us. It is an action game. It is a fighting game, but, but wait, there's more. And it did come out in 2013. That's crazy. Sony All Star <laughs> Fighting Game for the Guilty Gear XRD Revelator. <laughs> it's not a fighting game. It's a platform adventure from 2013. They were making a lot of them back then. That's a tough one, man. 2012 had Mark of the Ninja. What did we get up to in 2013? It's like a deadlight. No, no, no. A Fez? A Fez? That's, a that's another 2012, John. I could tell you that with authority because I was living in my parents' basement when it came out. 2012. 2012. It's... Um, Sorry, 2013. 2013. It's, uh, I, it's Strider. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm just going to throw some at the... Let's just throw out... Like, if we're trying to get, like, a platform, what kind of platform? Oh, you know what? That's a 2012. That's a 2012. This is so sad. Um wait 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 um nom 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 it's gonna appear in my head I know it I know it what was the killer app for the freaking ooya bro uh arrows what was the killer app towerfall thank you thank you tower oh they don't have it okay we're gonna throw some stuff we're gonna try to get some connections here okay Forget the year, we got the year. Skip the year, throw out something like a Fez, see if you get any other greens. It does not, it's not an open world fantasy. Uh, before we take our clue, can I get like a, um, 
like a mark of the ninja maybe. I know the year's wrong. We're just trying to get greens in other categories. No such luck. Okay, hint me. Ubi Art Framework. Is this a person who made this work for Ubisoft? It's insanity. A side-scrolling Ubisoft game. It's not Child of Light. It's Valiant Hearts, The Great War. Okay. Got a lot of greens there, but it's from a year earlier. It's Child of Light. Maybe that was in a different part of game though before. No, okay, it's not Child of Light. And that's from 2014, idiot. 2013. Could not tell you. It's Far Cry Blood Dragon. Right. Oh, that's easy enough. Oh. <laughs> Rayman Legends. That one stings the most because I think I got that one before. Caden and I played through all of one of the Rayman. I think it was Rayman Legends. It's a good game. It was. Thank you. I will say, I'm not an extreme hater by any stretch of the imagination, but I vibe less with platformers where it's like, please collect everything in this environment because I'm not a detail-oriented Andy. I'm not a details Andy. I vibe a lot more with a platformer that's like, here's a run button, here's a jump button, don't die. And everything tries to kill you. Those are my, you give me the choice between a, a Super Mario 2 of the Lost Levels or a Banjo Kazooie. I'm going, I'm going Super Mario 2 of the Lost Levels. A five word comedy that isn't really that well liked by anybody from 1988. I have no idea. A lowbrow laugh fest centered on a strong, explicitly sexual woman. Stupid fun. A distaff gothic version of Pee Wee's Playhouse. What is death becomes her? What is moonstruck? What is a, a distaff gothic version of Pee Wee's Playhouse? A hilarious and witty send-up of small-town puritanical values with standout performances by Cassandra Peterson and MVP McClurg. She's a Metropolitan Vice President? I don't know what this is, man. It's an Elvira movie. Elvi placeholder text. Cl critics consensus. Placehol okay, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. I hit next clue instead of guess. <laughs> oh, but I got it. You got today's daily tomato. Okay, okay, okay. Sheesh. Saved. 77 wins out of 64 plays. It's not so bad. <clears throat> This is a, can I tell you something that you're not going to like? No? All right, never mind. Never mind then. This, I was going to mention something about this photo, and you were going to disagree with me, but some people were going to say yes, and we might have had a discussion. Maybe librarian could have put it in a hot takes compilation or something like that. My hot take, I'm going to say it anyway, because I, I march to the beat of my own drum. I love crab, I love lobster, not the hot take. However, having to shell my own crab like this, I'll do it once as a cultural experience, maybe even a, like a once every few years as a cultural experience. I would rather just have like a prepared dish, quite frankly. It tastes good, but I, it's a whole lot of... I'm getting so many plus twos, man. This is crazy. You know, the, the first time we went on a Disney cruise, they have the buffet every day. You see middle-aged Andes from all over the world lining up for when they put out the fresh crab legs on ice. I got in line. I said, this is why you come to the buffet. 
You got to get the crab legs, especially when they're fresh. You got to get your money's worth. I, I got one of the claw breakers and I started breaking the claws and sticking a little fork in there and going, nom, 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 and the meat is good, but it took like so much work to get a little bit of the delicious meat that when I went back up, I was like, just give me, give me something else. Give me a, give me a stew, a Brunswick stew or something like that. Give me a curry, give me the fried rice, give me the orange chicken or something. Can you cut off a couple pieces of, of prime rib and then give me the gravy on top of it? Like, I like the flavor of, of, a, uh, of a crab. I like the flavor. A lobster tail is a little different because with a lobster tail, you just kind of go like, and then the whole thing comes out. But... Um, uh, getting the meat out of an entire crab, a little bit laborious for me. Now, that's why, and this will be a hot take maybe as well, that's why I love a soft shell crab. Because the, it's like a golden kiwi. You just eat the skin. I'll never forget, though, when I watched that History Channel show about the world's strongest men. And they had, like, uh, Brian Shaw and... What's the guy's name? Eddie... I forget his, I forget his, anyway, they had four strong men from around the world, Eddie Hall, that's it. And then for their cultural experience, they took them to a soft shell crab restaurant and they were all like borderline throwing up. They were like, this is so disgusting. I'm like, dude, you eat like 11,000 calories of maltodextrin powder a day and a soft shell crab has you like dry heaving in the restaurant. Like it's crazy. You can literally deadlift like 1,025 pounds, but you've been defeated by like a little crab? Anyway, couldn't be me in either category. Let's put it that way. I'll take, when they're done with it, I'll take the leftover crab. And you know what? You can have my plates for your deadlift, quite frankly, because I don't think I'm going to be needing them because my wrist is still a little bit messed up. Anyway. I think this is 1954. Oh, 1938? Holy cow. I'm just, I'm proud of you. That's what I'm saying, I'm proud of you. Hey, NL, did you see the Peloton seat recall? Respectfully, yes, four months ago when it, when it came out. Uh, this... That's a dash cam. Peter Stormare has brought his dash cam to the, <laughs> to the rodeo. That's a GoPro. This is just an incredible photo, man. That is John Malkovich. <laughs> <laughs> this guy knows. He knew the assignment. This is TJ Miller, dude. There's absolutely no doubt. I'm, this is a, a is very famous people in this image. Now, <laughs> I don't know if I wouldn't want to be there. <laughs> is this real? Like, I know this isn't an AI-generated image, but, like, is this a real thing? Like, did an accident happen and they all fell down? Or do people, like, volunteer to be trampled on by the bulls? Like, I'm just being real with you. This guy is dead. This guy is going to probably also die. This guy will probably just get severely hurt. This guy might be okay. I'm going to say that's great coverage. You... You're dead. You're definitely dead as well. You need to put the camera away and hold your head with two hands, okay? First off, the shot is not going to... I don't even know what this is. Is this your last will and testament? One hand is not going to do it for you. Please put your, put your items in your pockets. This is not a selfie moment. This is a moment where you commit to your survival and then you let the memory live in eternity. And some, trust me, somebody else has taken a picture. I think this is the year 2012. 2017, okay? This is midsummer. 
an Ari Aster film. I think this is 1911. 1920. This is a tough game, man. Go, 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 go. This is 1924. Let's do 23. 1933. This is one of the worst performances of my life for sure. <laughs> Can you give me some more like college dining hall photos from 2008? Like that is my, that's my era, man. This is 19... 40 even. <laughs> oh my god. 1307. This man does not know the 20th century. That didn't look like 1940. Can I be honest with you? It, it, without insulting my countrymen, I thought that it was... Like, obviously, that's not what American soldiers look like in 1940, but I thought that's what Canadian soldiers might have looked like in 1940. I thought that was Sir Arthur Curry who I'm now realizing is from the First World War, but anyway. Okay, sorry, people told me I forgot Sine to Nerdle today. You're absolutely right, I forgot Sine to Nerdle. They would have had equipment lent from the British. Excuse me, sir, we were making our own equipment back then. We were giving people trench foot with like absolutely god-awful boots. We were giving them Ross Rifles. They were under the administration of Sir Robert Borden and they liked it, okay? Arnold Schwarzenegger. Everything freezes. Poison Ivy. This is Batman and Robin. Ah, everything freezes. Wesley Snipes. <laughs> I was thinking that, isn't that... What he says in uh, Demolition Man, because he turns into an ice cube at the... Anyway, maybe not. Michael Fassbender, Jobs, Apple. Ah, and we have some Narnia, too. And then White Man Can't Jump with Wesley Snipes. Seth, Seth Rogen's in that Apple movie. I forgot. Okay, so there you go. You got White Man Can't Jump, Batman and Robin, Narnia, that movie was called Jobs, right? Steve Jobs, okay. Lion is the name of a movie. I don't believe it has Wesley Snipes in it. Secret Passage, Jobs, Wesley Snipes, Evil Queen, Poison, Evil Queen, White Queen, The Wizard of Oz, right? The White Queen, Alice in Wonderland, Evil Queen, Maleficent, Maleficent, Ivy, Evil Queen, Poison, Evil Queen, Poison, Apple, Evil Queen, this is Snow White, Snow White, ah, my favorite movie from 1937, Okay, we got there. Today's was a 4.6 out of 5. Like, that's, that's a very high average. Way too long for a Disney adult. You're so close. You're so close to understanding that I am not a Disney adult. It doesn't make you a Disney adult to appreciate a good, a good time, okay? Now, there were motherfuckers at Disney World that are like, have you seen Disenchanted? Those are Disney adults. Because I have not seen Disenchanted, and I have not seen Enchanted. I've heard a couple of the songs on Spotify Disney Radio with my kids in the car. Enchanted's good. Enchanted's a banger. Sorry, you're a Disney adult. The first one's good. Did you know Amy Adams just turned like 50 years old? That's crazy, man. She looks it. No, she fucking doesn't. Hate her. Why don't you go to Ross Dress for Less and see what the average 49-year-old looks like in today's day and age? Why don't you go to Ross Dress for Less and see what the average 29-year-old looks like these days? <laughs> I 
I think is more insane that Christine Baranski is 71. I don't want to get into that because it's too real. I, so honestly, something changed in me as a 13-year-old kid when I watched How the Grinch Saved Christmas. She would have been like 53 when that movie came out or something like that. As a 13-year-old, I was like, what is this, what is this feeling? He stole Christmas, ruined Christmas. What, I'm, not a, I'm not a Disney adult. I don't know shit about the Grinch, man. There is something about Christine Baranski, for sure. I mean, how do you think I watched six seasons of The Good Wife? That's like two seasons after the show Jump the Shark. Angels and Demons. Never mind. <laughs> Wait, sequels! Angels and Demons, Dr. Sleep, Star Wars Attack of the Clones. He's crazy. Scream, X-Men Origins, the, Wolf, the X-Men Origins, Wolverine, the Manchurian Candidate. These are movies with Liv Schreiber. Movies with Liv Schreiber. Movies with Liv Schreiber. Let me get a swap and a swap just so I don't lose that, okay? Halloween Jaws, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. These are the scariest movies of the 1970s. <laughs> Babu Frick! And then, Fearless, Cape Fear, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Movies with fear in the title. Hot Swap Me, okay. The average is a four out of five. We're already there with six swaps remaining. These are sequels. Never mind, they're Ewan McGregor. What's crazy, though, is they are all sequels. Birds of Prey is the second movie in the... Maybe not. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> we'll lead his two kings. Let's, let's, let's cook a little bit. Tom Hanks, Andre, Audrey Tattoo. Cliff Curtis, Ewan McGregor, sequels, Natalie Portman, Natalie Portman, X-Men Origins Wolverine, Ryan Reynolds, Ryan Reynolds, Ryan Reynolds, Cliff Curtis, Tom Hanks, Denzel Washington, Liv Schreiber, Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox Arquette, uh, 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 um, uh, there's, a, there's another, uh, Rosie Perez, Rosie Perez, Rosie Perez, Rosie Perez, I got a problem, okay? I don't know almost anything about any of these movies. Ed Norton, Richard Gere, Twist Ending. Robert De Niro, Martin Scorsese, John Leguizamo. No, Johnny Depp. <laughs> John Leguizamo. <laughs> that would be a fucking sick movie, though. John Leguizamo as a lead actor. Uh, anyway. Benicio Del Toro. Halloween. Jamie Lee Curtis. Okay. Richard Dreyfus, Richard Dreyfus, Mr. Holland's Opus, Linda Blair, Linda Blair, Tobe Hooper, Tobe Hooper, Leatherface, Tobe Hooper, Grandpa is Hungry. What are superhero movies? No. John Carpenter, Twist Ending. Movies based on Stephen King books. Movies that take place in Texas. Movies that take place in Manchuria. Movies that take place on Naboo. Dr. Sleep, Cliff Curtis, Angels and Demons, Tom Hanks, Birds of Prey. I'm feeling like, honestly, I'm lost. So here's what I'm going to do. I feel like if Rosie Perez was in multiple of these movies, Mo Rosie Perez was not in any of these fucking movies. She would have been two years old. Shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. Margot Robbie, not in any of these. these it's like 70s, 90s. So what's the connection going to be? Connection could be director. I don't think so. We got Steven Spielberg. I don't think Steven Spielberg directed any of these. I don't think Steven Spielberg directed X-Men Origins Wolverine. Or Star Wars Attack of the Clones. 
Old dudes. Christopher Lee. No, too old. <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis. Robert De Niro. Jaws. Richard Dreyfus. Richard Dreyfus. X Men Origins. It's going to be like a, a, a theme, I think. And I don't know what it is. That's my problem. Split personalities. Split personalities. The devil? Wait, 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 okay, hang on. Manchurian candidate is like a sleeper agent. That's kind of like having two personalities in one. Dr. Sleep. He be sleeping. It's got sleep in the title. Sleeper candidate. Sleeper agent. Halloween. Oh, no. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't Jason, I mean, Mike Myers, he's kind of got a split personality, right? I'll never forget in the, in, so the Halloween remake, which was actually like the, the one from 2017 that's pretty decent. They got, they got Mike Myers just in the mental hospital. He's Mike Myers. You got to cut his head off. It's the only way. They literally got him like in prison, but like, a, like he killed like a thousand people. <laughs> Something like that. They just got him in the yard, pacing around. He's literally neurodivergent. Look what happened. He busted out of the fucking hospital and murdered like another 11 people or something like that. I'm against the death penalty, but this is a supernatural threat, okay? It's the same shit. You got to cut off Thanos' head. You don't put Thanos in Supermax next to the damn Unabomber, the Richard Reed, the dude who tried to light his shoes on fire 22 years ago. You got to put him in the wood chipper, Peter Stormare style, okay? It's the same thing with Mike Myers. They ever capture Jason Voorhees, they got to they gotta throw him in the wood chipper. Magneto, you can't keep throwing Magneto in the plastic prisons, okay? At some point, you... you the, the burden is on you. He keeps escaping from the plastic prisons using the hemoglobin in your blood or like the graphite in your pencil or something like that. Anyway, I don't, <laughs> I don't have an answer for you here. Mark Ruffalo, Robert De Niro, Hugh Jackman, Liv Schreiber. Fear in title, 70s, I don't know. Movies that have been remade. Movies based on Hunter S. Thompson, Fever Dreams. Models that have been remade. Angels and Demons. Sequels. Tom Hanks. Audrey Tattoo. Spotlight. Mark Ruffalo. Dr. Sleep. Cliff Curtis. That lady who looks like Michelle Pfeiffer, but is not Michelle Pfeiffer. Her name's Rebecca Ferguson. Birds of Prey. Superhero films. Super movies based on a day. Dr. Sleep. <laughs> Cape Fear. Oh! Angels and Demons, Spotlight, Primal Fear. It's going to be some old dude. I'm crazy. I don't know what it is. Oh, it's about the church. Catholic church priests. I We just got lucky to get there, but... Isn't Primal Fear the one where Ed Norton is like, you can't put me in prison. I have a split personality and it was my guilty personality that made me do it. But then at the end of the movie, he's like, surprise. I was the guilty personality the whole time. I tricked you and, oh, he killed a priest. Ah, oh, you know what they should have put on? They should have put on um, First Reformed. I guess it wouldn't have fit with the fear, but <laughs> you know what? These are hard puzzles to create. I'm not mad. I just wanted to gas up Ethan Hawke a little bit. Sorry. Did you just spoil the movie for everybody? She came out in 1986, motherfucker. Get a life. You were going to see Primal Fear by now. You probably would have made it a priority. Did you just spoil the book of Genesis for me?
You weren't going to watch it. You were going to watch Puss in Boots again, review it on Letterboxd for like the ninth time. You were going to watch it at 2.5x speed. This is Japan. I think they're exercising. It's a vibe to exercise with a tucked in shirt. I'm going to say, I don't know. I'm going to say this is Japan. I mean, the question is, is it pre-war, post-war, or intra-war? I'm going to say that this is post-war. I think this is like 1955 Tokyo. It's 1952, a calisthenics session during a five-minute stopover from Osaka to Tokyo. Okay, pretty good. 80, 88, 86. We are in Sweden. Well, that's how you know the restaurant's good. <laughs> Wait, you mean the Lotus House Chinese restaurant in downtown Malmo isn't making its own sliced pork and Szechuan sauce? Heineken, Husqvarna, Sweden, Radio Service Company and Limited, Alpha Sewing Machines. This is, this is England because the signs are in English. This is London. <laughs> mm, that looks good. <laughs> Can I see a picture of the pork leg with mushrooms? They show you this upside down cardboard box. <laughs> yes. I'll have that. What's the soup of the day? Um, I think this is 1970 even. 1980 in Gibraltar. That's a, you know what? Bit of a curve, but it makes sense. I appreciate it. Now, this is a avant-garde sort of photo technique right here. Does he know that he's going the wrong way? Well, you're, you're en route. Sorry, I don't know why I'm Sweden obsessed today. You're en route between Birmingham and Blackheath. When I think of Heath, I think of this area down here for sure. And uh, I'm going to say this is 1960 even. It's 1974. Accidental, uh, the cars do look way more 70s than 60s, but... Oh, uh, Shibuya 109 in Shinjuku, Japan, Shibuya, Japan, <laughs> which is in Tokyo. It's the Tokyo, it's the Shibuya Scramble Crossing. So that would be like right here. I'm going to say the Shibuya Scramble Crossing is in Shibuya. And that's Shibuya 109 right there. So let's just put me right there. We're roughly in that vicinity. Um, Year-wise, there's still a cigarette ad. I mean, this is like... 90s to, to Y2K style hair. And Japan definitely still has more of a, a smoking culture than North America. So I'm going on hair. I mean, that's not an 80s hair, man. That is, I mean, because this is what I look like in my fifth grade school photo. So I'm calling this, this is the year 2000. It's 1994. 
Japan always was a little bit ahead of the curve. I'm losing it too because people are like, year 2000, no way. And then they feel validated that it's 1994. They're like, see, 1994. 2000 was crazy. But 19, yeah, 1994 seems about right. I knew. I wasn't going to put in 1961 because I saw a Mini Cooper and it's black and white. Hey, Texas, now I'm the biggest bull. Dash, 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 dash. As a moose. I guess it could be like a bull moose. 49th. Is Alaska the 49th state in the Union? Is this what is going on here, man? He looks... I don't know if he's scared or he's like yelling at the moose. I'm going to say that this is... Uh, Juno, Alaska, which is like, oh, sorry, it's right there. Because that's the capital of Alaska, even though, you know, the, the, the resident Alaska nowhere has logged on, by the way. Thing that's crazy about Juno, Alaska, you um, can't get there by road. No disrespect, Alaska, but like, what were you thinking? You, it's got to be one of the only places like in the Western world that you can't get to via a damn road. And yet they got cars. <laughs> Is that true? It's true, man. You got you to gotta take, uh, to get there, you got to take a boat or a seaplane. You ever hear of an island? Yeah, but this fucker's not on an island. It's on like an incredibly large contiguous landmass. Yes, you can. My dad did multiple trips to Alaska. What are you talking about? Here we go. Here we go. Can you get to Juneau, Alaska by car? Why is Juneau not accessible by car? The absence of a road network is due to the extremely rugged terrain surrounding the city. This in turn makes Juneau a de facto island city in terms of all transportation since goods coming in and out must go by plane or, goat or boat in spite of the city's location on the Alaskan mainland. Guess what? Sounds like you should listen to your dad a little bit more carefully instead of scrolling through your phone while he's telling you about the experiences in his life that led him to be the person that he is today. Because I'm sure your dad, if he went to Juneau, Alaska, probably said we had to take a boat there. And you were going, huh, huh, ice cream so good, ice cream so good, gang, gang. So maybe you should listen to the things that he's telling you instead of just trying the 2.5x fast forward when you think he's telling you a boring story, okay? He's your, he's your father. You know, you know the reason I chose you, by the way, is because you said, huh, question mark? My dad literally drove there. And then you, you added a, a coda as well. You said, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? You didn't have to come at me with that level of aggression when you're incorrect in the first place. If I was objectively wrong, that's an appropriate level of attitude. But you were the one who was wrong. And you were, you were coming at me like I'm the idiot. Let that be a lesson in, in empathy, man. Apologize. Maybe his dad lied to him. Yeah, nothing's ever your fault. It's always, for everybody else, it's always their own decisions tied to their personality. For you, you're like, it's the context, it's the situation. My blood sugar was low, I was hungry. Other people's actions caused me to go on the wrong path. Everybody else is like, wow, that motherfucker's evil. Look inside of yourself, man. We're all made of the same stardust. Anyway, get on. This is Juneau, Alaska. I'm going to say that Alaska joined the Union in 1952, 1953, 1958. I thought that Hawaii joined in 
1955. I thought Hawaii was the last one, but that's just incorrect, I think. <laughs> and it's in Anchorage. Alaska's all, it's loosey-goosey over there, okay? Because Anchorage is like the biggest city, and I think you can get there by car. Don't, don't quote me on that. I said, I think. But they still said, nah, man, we're going to keep the capital in Juneau, a city you can only fly an airplane to that has like one third the population. What a, you, listen, no disrespect to BC cells in the chat, but I mean, our capital city is Victoria. That's not, and it's on a damn island. But I kind of like it because we got enough politicians over here. You ever see our ballots in our municipal elections? How am I supposed to know which eight people to vote for as park board trustees? It's crazy. That's, that's, that's too much of an expectation to have for your average voter. How did we do? 36,541. That's a loss, unfortunately. We don't take those. <clears throat> Look up the Trans Canada Highway. I don't need to look it up. I drive on it like two times a week. Why don't you just link me to the video essay you watched? I'll watch it in 2.5x speed and whenever it gets boring, I'll hit 30 second fast forward, get to the cliff notes at the end. Today, I'd like to go from Somaliland to Morocco. That's tough. <laughs> Because you are Morocco and you are Somaliland. At some point, you're going to travel through Chad. That's my, that's my humble guess. At some point, you're going to travel through Egypt into Sudan into Somalia. Oh, fuck. <laughs> okay, we can make a connection via Ethiopia. Yeah! And this is the hard part. I believe there will be a Mali in here. Western Sahara. Oh, fuck. It's so small. <laughs> Algeria. Tunisia. Oh. <laughs> Libya would have done it for us. <sighs> Mauritania. I always forget about Mauritania. I, I, it makes sense. I should know. You guys all seem really smart. In geography, let's see how your smart asses do in Pukdoku. <laughs> this is a tough one, brother. St. Louis Blues, 40 plus playoff games played in career. I have to ask a question about the rules. Do they need to have played 40 games with their team, with, with St. Louis? Because like Wayne Gretzky played for St. Louis, he definitely played more than 40 plus playoff games, okay? No? Okay, well in that case, give me a freaking Doug Gilmore. <laughs> Gretzky isn't active. They don't have to be active. This dude's filming Sonnet insurance commercials. Has been for like 17 years. The frosted tips are so good, man. Philadelphia, 40 plus career playoff games played. Give me a Mikhail Renberg. Oh! 
Arizona, 40 plus playoff games played in his career. That's a Keith Kachuk. You got to go Keith Kachuk on that one. Okay. Now, this is where things get tough because I can't just go back to the 90s. Philadelphia, New York Islanders. Give me a Keith Pre Give me a Wayne Primo. Oh, give me a Keith Primo. Oh, give me a Joe Primo. Give me a Kevin. One of oh fuck, I'm washed. <laughs> One of these Primos played for both teams, man. It's okay. They can never take this column away from me. I can get one more column. I can get another column. This is a gimme. Oleg Tverdovsky. Oh, <laughs> okay. A lot of people got nine this week. They must be very good at the game. Um, of course, Philadelphia, New York Islanders, you got Mark Strait. Nashville, St. Louis, you got Paul Correa. Makes perfect sense. I, I hate missing an opportunity for Brett Hull. He's in like every single puck doku. Halak, of course, St. Louis and New York Islanders. Should have known that. Kyle Turris could have gotten that too. Probably not getting Andrew Ladd because both of these teams have been mired in irrelevancy for 25 years. I know, look who's talking. Um, and I know New York Islanders fans, I'm sorry. I know you made the conference finals, not but three years ago. I'm just saying. I live 17 time zones away from you, and you're the third biggest team in your zip code. No disrespect. I like the blue and the orange. I like the blue and the orange. Just remember, slash marker puck doku, that it was Bo Horvat who drew first.